So in this class, I need us to consider the basics of our transformer as we had our transformer before from our N4. You had been working with the transformer as usual. So what is it to consider when a transformer is now to be on no load? It is no, no load, meaning to say we do not have the load. What is it that we are supposed to actually consider in this case? It's actually a condition that during the no load condition, a transformer draws a small amount of power from the supply. So in that case, we are actually saying the output of the transformer during no load is zero. At no load, the output, they talk about this, uh, just a basic construction, guys. Remember, you're having a close uh, this. And also this side, you're going to have your secondary side. So on the secondary side, you're supposed to have a load that is connected. But you're saying it's no load. There's nothing that is connected. So the output, therefore, is referred to be a zero. So you're talking about the major part being on the output. That the output of the transformer must be a zero. The output of the transformer, output of the transformer uh, during no load, during no load is zero. That is the major part that you are going to have. And the function of this uh, part that we can see is definitely that there is nothing to be considered. Uh, so we're not going to have much part there. I need us, as I stated, that wow, how is it going to be like on the equivalent circuit diagram? So the equivalent uh, circuit diagram, they will need you to understand this. Uh, the equivalent uh, circuit diagram on what? On no load. Okay, what are we going to actually have? So on the equivalent circuit diagram, we are going to have uh, on the input, we're going to have the resistor. And remember, we have got the reactances, uh, which are from the leakage. Uh, from that part of our leakage, we're going to talk of the reactances. And with this, on the primary side, uh, the current that is flowing is referred as the no load current, which is drawn from the supply. And it is the same current that we are going to have being divided uh, between uh, this component of the core. And also we've got the component that you're gonna uh, talk about uh, in that case. So you're gonna consider this as, as a coil. So in this case, let's say the whole part is connected to the major coil of our transformer, meaning to say we talk of the primary side and the secondary side, but the voltage is there, will be referred to as the EMF. So this is the primary side that we are having, where in turn, where here we've got the, the voltage that is entering, which is our input, uh, that is our V1 at the terminals, we've got your V1, and the current that is gonna flow is the one that we are referring to as the no load current, there's nothing to be considered. Some other books they can just use I1, then they represent here as that is now of the magnetic and this part of the core loss component. So they can present, it depends with the textbook that you are using, all right? So this is the first resistor and this is our first reactance like on the primary side, we talk of R1 and X1, the reactance due to the leakage part. And like I said, uh, due to this current, which is the no load current, it is now subdivided in parallel. So it means we're going to have another current flowing this side, another current flowing this side, which is this side is the magnetic, and this other side is the core loss component of this no load current that we are given. And like I said, the voltage now will be referred this side as E1. So we're going to have this as E1, which is now referring to the EMF, the induced EMF, induced EMF. That is the one that is gonna be open. Like I said, uh, your R2 and as well, your reactance to the output. So the output is actually open. There's nothing that you have to consider. So the output there will be equal to what? To zero. So there having the generated EMF, but on the secondary side, the resistance, so on the secondary side and the reactants on the secondary side. So this is the major part that you are going to actually be having. If they want you to draw this uh, equivalent circuit diagram, 
or in any presentation that they needed. Uh, that is the major part that you are going to present. And from here, uh, like I said, uh, let me just try and list one or two from what I explained. Like we saw that V1 is the normal primary voltage. Uh, this V1 is simply representing our normal primary voltage. This is our normal uh, primary voltage. Then we talk of the E1 and E2. Okay, so the E1 and these are now induced EMFs too, which is for the second, but they represent what? The induced EMF, the X1 and the X2, these are reactances. So we talk of X1 and X2, these are reactances that we are going to have from our leakage, which are the leakage reactances. And we've got the resistances R1 and R2 as of the primary and the secondary. So these are the resistances. Talk of them, the resistances that are affecting our circuit from the primary side and R2 on the secondary side. And we talked of the, these currents that are being subdivided from IO, which is representing the no load current since we are at we are considering the no load. So we are going to consider these two currents taken from the no load current as it is. So I O, that is our no load current. This is the no load current. And as you have to consider this no load current, this is exactly the current that has been drawn from the supply, drawn gen off our no load current. And we talk of I M, which is in this case, the magnetizing component. So this will be, our magnetizing uh, component. And this magnetizing component is actually uh, of what? Of the no-load current. So this is of IO. Then we talk of IC, uh, this other current that is being sub-considered and IC representing the core loss component of what? Of uh, IO. So this is the core loss uh, component of what? Of IO, which is IO is our no-load current. So that is the major part that actually you are going to have on the equivalent uh, circuit diagram. And on this, we can have the phasor diagram or no load or no load. So the phasor diagram is going to be relating these currents that we are given, the voltage V1, and also you're going to consider E1 and E2, which are the induced EMFs, all right? So that is the part that you are also going to need uh, which is the vector or the phasor? Okay, that is on load. Heck not. We do not have the load in that case. So you're going to see that uh, this current I O, which is the no load current, will be taken at a certain angle, uh, which is actually lagging uh, the V one that we are given. Okay, so this I O is going to be lagging. So it's going to be like this, guys. I'm just gonna present this one direct here we just need our diagram all right so the phasor diagram is just going to be a simple part uh, you're going to have your voltage and this will be the part of our uh, flux remember we talk of the flux with, as you talk of the transformer there is the part of the useful flux uh, which is to be considered uh, okay so this will be a voltage e1 and e2 will be on this side all right, so this is what you're going to have. Uh, you are going to obtain uh, that I O is actually a resultant that can be obtained. Uh, this I O, just like the total current. Remember, when you're dealing with those phasor diagrams, uh, the current I O is like the total current. This is your total current. So it is going to be lagging uh, this V1 by angle. Uh, that is going to be phi in that case. So you're going to be having uh, phi naught, which is at what? which is representing the no load. So in this case, the difference that we are going to actually have going this side, that is this difference here is the same as the difference that is the same presented from this point, like corresponding to this side, the, this distance that we are seeing here and is I M. So this part here is going, so this will be part of I M, which is actually going to be the one corresponding uh, to this value here. Okay. Then I C will be on the other hand, uh, corresponding to this, distance that we are seeing here, that is the same distance that we are going to have our uh, part of IC in this, okay, in this side. So that is the condition. 
So if you take a closer look, you just see that uh, there is all these formulas that we have been generating before. It is just there we are formulating a right angle triangle, which you can also use this idea as a right angle. It's, it depends with the way that you actually want. But if, if you can also consider if there is a line drawn here, which is a vertical line, it means these two sides will be parallel to each other. That means the angle that we are having here will be the same as the angle that we're going to have here. If the triangle was to be completed, you're going to see that we transferred here. That is the condition. So you must be careful of that part. So this, I say, remember, guys, uh, we can also relate from our Pythagoras. This is the same thing that we are having this idea. This is the same thing that we are having this idea. So you can relate that this is I am. This is the same as I am that we are seeing. So given two sides, you can calculate the third side using Pythagoras theorem. This is the same thing even if the current was here. You are having two sides. You can calculate the third side. So it depends with your arrangement that you're going to have there. But the diagram, uh, that is what you are going to need. And from this, uh, these are the formulas or the calculations that they want you to uh, have. So the calculations uh, from there. You must expect to calculate uh, number one. Uh, this is from uh, your end component. I not uh, cos of what? Cos of phi, uh, that is the angle that we are given. Uh, where you'll be given. This might be given. So it depends with what you are having. But that is the formula for I. I see. Then I am is equal to I not uh, sine of what? Sine of the angle that you are given there. That is the condition. For I am and I not from our Pythagoras, as we can see that I I not squared is equal to gonna have very sorry. All right, very sorry for that here. So I think it's my network here. I don't know what's happening with my network. Uh so they're saying it was supposed to be uh I see here. We've got the I see this side. So this is supposed to be I C squared, then you can introduce them. The square root to determine to remove that that will be i o is equal to the square root of i m squared plus uh, i c squared. So we have got these formulas, guys, from our info. This is just a recap, just for you to have the basics uh, of your info. But you have this. So meaning to say, uh, in this case, you can also calculate i o from uh, i m and i c. That is going to be i m squared uh, i c squared under under the square root. We can calculate the power at no load that is uh, number four, the power at no load. So the O there is for no load. And so we have the no load, we're gonna denote with what? With the O. So the power at no load uh, or the power on no load is going to be given by V1 uh, I naught. Okay, the cos of, this is the actual power or the true power. So meaning to say, we must use the cos. So it's going to be I O, the cos of the angle that we are given there, uh, which is, if you are to consider properly, you're going to see that the whole of this part here, the I C, uh, the I O cos is the same as the I O cos that we have here. So what does it mean? It means in place of this, we can substitute with I C. So from this, we can conclude or we can just say the power can also be given from V1, the wall of this part, if it represents IC. So therefore, let us substitute with IC. So thus, we can have this formula that way. Uh, in other ways, we can also say uh, IC here, which we calculated from this formula. If we make it the subject from this, we're going to divide by V1. So it's going to be P uh, not over V1 which is the power or no load over V1. We can also obtain IC from there. That is the power on no load. So these are the calculations actually that you need. Uh, and as we can see, this is what we had as our basics of our info. So I just want you to go through that. Then as we are going to consider uh, when it is on load, that is another major part that you need to understand in your syllabus. So we're going to see that uh, in our next class.